Hello friends, welcome to Code Sutra. In this video, we'll be solving lead code problem number 46, permutation. In fact, this was one of the problems that I had recommended in yesterday's videos. And this is one of the problem that we had solved in a recently concluded workshop on recursion and backtracking. So if you are someone who is looking for this kind of workshop, please do consider joining the telegram group where I will be sharing the information regarding this workshop. So let us dive into the problem. In this problem, we are given an array which will contain unique numbers and the problem statement is very simple. We have to form all the permutation of these three numbers. For example, these are the six permutations of these three numbers, right? Now, what is the approach that we have to use for this or any backtracking problem? I will be sharing three simple steps that you can use to solve any backtracking problem. Why this is a backtracking problem? First of all, it's because in this problem, we are asked to find all the permutation. We are not asked to find some permutation or the number of permutation. We are straight away asked, we have to find all the permutation. So this is a backtracking problem straight away. Now, what is the first step? The first step is you have to identify what is the bigger problem and what is the smaller problem that can this bigger problem be peeled into smaller problems. The first step, can it be peeled? Yes, right. What are we doing here? We are forming arrays of size three, right? That is what we are doing. Now, can we fill the first digit? If we have filled the first digit, does this problem get reduced to a problem of size two? Now we had to fill in three places, but all we have to do is fill the next two places. And we again have these three choices to fill in these places. But since one is already there for this place, what are the choices available? The choices available is two and three. Similarly, for the first place, what was the choice available? There were three choices, one, two, and three. And just for this example, we choose one, right? Now, after, as soon as you choose one, the options for the next place get reduced to two and three. So what we are essentially doing is we are choosing one option. And as soon as we choose one option, the problem is getting reduced to a sub problem. That is the first step is we have to find the recursive relationship. That is the first step or in simple words, sub problem. What is the sub problem? This is the first step. What is the second step? The second step is we'll be drawing a recursive tree. Let me show you how we can draw the recursive tree. Initially, we will be having an empty array, right? This will be our answer. This will be one of the permutation and initially this will be empty. Now, what are the options for the first place? What are the options? Now we can add one, we can add two and we can add three also. So there will be three options, one, two and three. So these three options will be written as the branches of this tree. Once we have added one, again, we will have three options. What are those three options? Again, we can add one, two and three. But since one is already there, we'll not be adding it. And this is a wrong option. That is, we will not further go down that route or we will not be adding one and testing that. What are the next option? The next option is either you can add two to this or three to this, right? Now let's look at one branch in depth. Once we are done with one and two, what we'll be doing again, we have options of adding one, two and three, but one and two will leading as a wrong option. So the only option that this will be producing is one, two, three. Similarly, if you look here, one, three, two and so on. So we'll be getting six permutation at the end of the problem. That is the second step is we should be able to draw the tree. What is the third thing? The third thing is you should be able to observe the flow in this tree or backtrack in this tree, right? One idea is first thing, one idea is we have an empty array list and we can pass three empty array list to everything. And once we have one in this array list, what we can do is we can pass a copy of this to all the three, but we will not be doing that. We will be using the same array list because copying and forming a new array list is a very costly process. So we will be for passing down the same array list. So if you are passing down the same array list, Let's look at what is happening here. So first one is getting added. Now two is getting added. Let's go in depth. Now three is getting added here. Once the size of this array list is equal to the expected size, we will add it to the answer. We'll add it to our answer. Once we are done with this, what happens? It is coming back and we will be adding, removing three 
right we'll be removing this three and also will be this removing this two and we will form in the same array list why we are forming within the same array list is because we don't want to pass down a copy so what is happening here is as soon as you come back to this step it will get reduced to one two similarly as soon as you go back to this step it will just get reduced to one so not only adding the numbers you have to keep in track you also have to keep in track which are the numbers we are deleting if you look at here at every step we are deleting the number that is at last and sending back the array once again right now these are the three steps that you can use to solve any backtracking problem now let me share the pseudo code for this problem we have the main function and for any backtracking problem, I would like to keep the result outside. That is make it a global variable so that this helper function becomes easily understandable. Now we just have a current list. That is the array list. If the size of this array list has reached the required size, that is in this example, if it has reached the size of three, what we'll be doing, we will just be adding it to the result. Don't forget, we have to add the copy of this results. Why in array list? the number will be changing and all the arrays will be having the same number if you don't add this new list. That is one thing and we'll be returning this because we don't have to continue further. If not, what are the options that we have? The options will be checking. Can I add one? Can I add two? Can I add three? So that is what we are checking here. What is the condition? The condition is that the array list should not be containing this number. Say for we want to add two. The condition is that two should not already be present in this particular array. If not, we'll be adding this and we'll be calling the helper function once again. That is, we are calling the recursive function once again. Finally, after we are done with all of this, we have to remove whichever the element that we have added so that it can form other options and it will be generating. So this is the step. And finally, we'll be calling this main function through the this helper function through the main function that is permute function what we'll be doing calling this with the same nums and we'll be passing down a new array list and finally we'll be returning the results and these are some of the similar problems that you can try to solve which have very similar template to this problem and these are two hard level problem please do consider solving this and we have a de dedicated telegram group where we'll be solving this problem so do consider joining our telegram group thank you for watching the video please do like share and subscribe